In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to completely relight the scene of the street using Camera Roy inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're going to have a look at relighting this photo. We'll turn it into a night scene but we're going to be kind of approaching this a little bit differently than we have the last few weeks. We've actually been doing a series on lighting effects. Right now we're going to do this in Camera Raw, which is part of Photoshop. But also if you want to do it in Lightroom, you can do it as well. Just follow along. And then in the very end, we'll go back into Photoshop again for a few finishing touches. So why don't we get started? So here's a scene here from a city. I grabbed this photo from Adobe Stock and I'll put a link to this uh, image. All right, what we're going to do though is we're going to right click and we're going to convert this to a smart object. Now the reason I'm converting this to a smart object is when we want to go and edit it or change it later on, we can go back into Camera Raw and change our settings later. All right, so now we're going to go up under Filter and we're going to choose Camera Raw Filter. Now if you're using Photoshop CS6 or earlier, just right click on the photo inside of Bridge and choose Open in Camera Raw. And then you're going to see the camera raw tools here. I'm just going to click the plus key so I can maximize this. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a nighttime scene. So why don't we go up under the tools here and you're going to see this little oval tool here. It's called the radio filter. And we're going to choose, where should we start? Let's start with this light here. So I'm looking at this photo quickly, analyzing it. And I can see as far as light sources, there's one here. There's a second one there. I see a third, a fourth. And then down here, we can see little street lamps down there. So it's good to pay attention to that just so we know where they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to just draw out an oval. Now, when I work with this tool, it's quite simple. This little dot in the middle enables me to move it around. And these points here enable me to change the shape of it or move outside. I can rotate it. All right. So we can see it's lightened up the rest of the photo. We want to darken it. So let's go under the exposure and drag it down and notice how this works. So when we choose the setting here that says outside, everything outside of this oval is going to be adjusted and everything inside the oval is going to be preserved. But we've got this nice smooth feather and I'll show you why is the feather setting. So if we go to the left, this is basically just putting a circle around it. And as we increase the feather, we can kind of blend it or just create a nice transition between here and the outside. I'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller because I want this to look like a little bit like a glow around our street lamp. That's great. About there is looking good. And what I want to do too for the rest of this scene is I want to cool it down. So let's just scroll up here in the settings. So let's go up under temperature and we're going to cool it down. Let's pull it a little to the left. There we go. Now it's starting to look like a little bit more nighttime kind of coloring. So obviously everything else is very dark. So what we're going to do now, and this is a really fun part, is we are going to create points of light that we can drop on the photograph. And this is just going to really make it come alive. So with our oval tool selected, we're going to click on new. Notice that that just turns white now and I'm going to drag out a new one. So why don't we imagine there's a little pool of light here in the foreground. So we're just going to click and drag this out right now and drag it into position. Now, what we want to do though, is we want to make sure we're working on the inside. So now that we're on the inside, it's not going to affect the rest of the photo. It's only going to affect the photo inside this area. All right. So why don't we brighten it up a little bit? So we want to actually be casting a little bit of light. Now the temperature, of course, and that's by adjusting the exposure there. Now let's go up under the temperature because we want this to be nice and warm now, like a tungsten light. So we're going to increase this more into the yellows and look at that. Now we start to get more of a tungsten light effect. And notice how we can move this wherever we want it in the photograph. So I'm going to put it here and I'm going to turn this feather all the way up. So it's a very, very soft light. And let's just increase that a little bit. 
So essentially what we're getting now is we're having some light come in and just hit the front of this pavement from an invisible light source. I say an invisible light source because it could be behind a viewer or just up here, up to the side here. So this is where the illumination is coming from. All right, so why don't we just go, I'm just gonna play around for a little bit more. Just wanna warm it up and maybe make it even brighter. There we go. That's looking good. So why don't we add a couple of these around? So I'm gonna add one up on this side. So I'm just gonna click and drag. And notice I don't have to do anything because now it's taking on the settings, the previous settings. So just click over there, I'm just changing the angle of it, and we're just illuminating a little bit on the sidewalk there. Now we know there's a light here, so the light's gonna be falling underneath this, so why don't we create a pool of light? And I'm just clicking and dragging, and see how easy it is? And we're just adding that. Now I'm gonna take this feather down just a little bit. There we go, so it's just a little bit more abrupt, and we're gonna do the same here, because I wanna have light coming from this light and hitting the street. So just position it, move outside, change the angle, and notice how we're able to just apply this light, just like that. In fact, I'm gonna go back a little bit because it's probably gonna be around here and make it a little bit smaller. Now here's an additional thing. To see how this light's falling, it would be hitting the sidewalk here, but it might not necessarily be lighting up these cobblestones. Now these cobblestones could be lit up by another light behind there, which is very possible. But the other option you have is if you choose a brush, and I'm clicking on the brush here, and what I can do with this brush is obviously make it a little bit smaller. And you've got two, you've got the minus and the plus. So if I paint here with the minus, notice it takes it away from that part of the oval. So you can literally just paint it out. Like, let me show you here. If I could paint there with that minus, see how we can just take it away? I'm gonna undo that though. Control Z will undo that. But also if we wanna add more light, we can hit the little plus here. And with this plus, we could just paint a little bit of light. So maybe we want a little bit heading up here. Now this is gonna take the settings from this oval and see how we just apply it up there. But that feels a little much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this flow and we're gonna drop the flow down quite low. And now I can just paint. And notice as I'm doing this, we're just dropping a little bit of light up there. And if it feels like it's gone too far, like it's gone over the edge, which it has there, we can also protect this by choosing auto mask. And if we turn auto mask on, and now we paint on this side, notice it's only affecting it there. And also I wanna warm that up a little bit more. There we go, so that's looking pretty good. All right, so why don't we continue now? Let's go back to our little oval tool here and we're gonna just click on new. And why don't we create some light sources? So I want this light here to be illuminated, so I'm just gonna click and drag on that light. And we'll just create it and we'll just give it a little glow. So we got that little glow just kind of falling off. And let's have a look at the feather with this. Now, if you wanna hide this so you can see what's going on, you can do that by actually just tapping the H key. And with that H key, we're actually hiding it so we can see. And type that H key again and it goes back on. And if you just wanna hide that overlay, go down here and just click off overlay. And this way we can play around with our feather so we can see how soft we wanna make this light. Let's just put a little glow around it like that. That looks pretty good. Turn the overlay back on. And we know we've got another street lamp there. Why don't we just click on that to illuminate it? Click on that one to illuminate it. And see what we're doing now is we're starting to light up these different areas. So you can see how we're kind of lighting those up. Now there's other areas we could light too. I'm just gonna put a little bit more here on the sidewalk though. Let's just kind of click on here. And we can just rotate it around and let's just kind of drag it over and just kind of illuminating just a little bit there. If it's too much, of course, we can go in and we can adjust our exposure, make it a little bit more subtle. Now, I feel like I wanna put just a little bit on the wall here, maybe a little bit on that wall, just to kind of open it up so it's not so flat. So why don't we create this one? And I'm just gonna turn up the exposure a little bit. There we go. See how it's just kind of starting to hit it there? It's looking nice. Make it nice and warm, very warm here. Great, now let's do the same on this side here. So let's light it up here. 
And notice now we're starting to see a little bit of that reflection in that window. That's kind of nice. I'm just going to kind of drag it over a little bit so we kind of get it lit. Kind of coming from this area, so maybe there's another street light on the left-hand side. All right, now we want to actually light up some of these windows because all the windows are dark. So let's go under our tool. We're going to grab our brush tool, our adjustment brush. All right, so we're going to make this brush really small. Hit the left bracket key. And let's just paint over there. So you see what I'm doing with that window? I'm just painting over that window. And it's just kind of lighting up that window. Quite simple. Let's light up one up here. Just paint over it. If you want to light up a little bit inside here, see what I'm doing? Just, just dragging. It's pretty easy. And of course, you know, let's open up some of these windows down here. Let's open up the light. I've made this very small. And I'm just going to kind of zoom in a little bit so I can see a little bit closer. And we're just going to just kind of paint on some of these. Let's see what we're doing here. We're just kind of opening up these lights and let's just kind of pop on those street lights a little bit too because we want those on. And if it starts to get a little rough like it is there, just turn off the auto mask. And I'll make that just a little tad bigger. And notice now it'll just kind of glow around there. In fact, I think it's better. So I'm just going to paint over these. I'm going to take a low. What I'm going to do now is take this flow down just a little bit. And I'm going to paint over these areas. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a glow. So what I did is I painted on the light. Now I'm taking the flow lower, which means it's going to come in less opacity and that creates a little, you know, more of an ambient kind of glow around the edge of where the light is. Because the light does not just hit itself, it does kind of illuminate out. And I'm hitting the space bar to go up here. Let's make a larger brush and just give that a little glow around there. Same here. And give that a little glow. So it starts to affect some of the other areas. And I might just even go in here and light up one of the windows in the reflection. That'll just kind of give it an interesting look. Okay, so I'm zooming back out. And we can see this is kind of where we're getting with our image now. Let's just kind of get it to fit. So now it fits in the view. If we look at this before and after, that's before and that's after. As you can see what's kind of starting to happen. I'm going to go for a larger brush now because I want to create a little bit more of a glow around everything. And I'm going to take this flow down even lower, down to about 17%. And just kind of tap. See what I'm doing here? I'm just giving it a little bit of a glow around there. And I'm going to give it a little bit more on that building. So it's just kind of illuminating that building's edge there. Oh, that's looking better. And even in some of these areas here, I'm just going to light those up a little more. Maybe not that much. So what we're going to do is keep this flow very low. And I might even turn the density down. This density will lock it in so I can't go above 37% now. And so I can just kind of light that. See what we're doing there? We're illuminating that a little bit better. Let's go here and maybe I'm going to give it a little bit more here just in our foreground area. There we go. Now, if you feel like you've gone over the edge, once again, just go here, hit the erase and we can go in there and we can erase the edge. See that? So I'm going to do that here because I feel like I went over a little too much. There we go. And if you go over too much, then just go back to add. Then we can go in here and we can just paint this back in and see what we're doing. So it gives you that kind of fine control. All right, I'm going to make this brush a little bit bigger here. All right, so why don't we go into Photoshop now and have a look at a few other things. So what we're going to do is click OK. And this is going to apply it in Photoshop. 
So this is what we're looking at and we can see before and after by turning on or off this eyeball. So if we want to go back in and edit it, we can double click here on camera raw. This will take us back in. And if you remember the initial one that we applied here with this filter, now when you roll over any of these, it's going to show you where they are. So I'm going to click on this one. And if you remember, this is where we set our overall brightness for the scene. So we can make it darker. We can make it lighter. See what we can do. So we're setting that area outside of our brush strokes. And if I wanted to make it even cooler, I could see that with adjusting that temperature. So this is a nice thing about working here in camera raw is if you want to make these adjustments later, you can. Maybe I want to play around with the tint a little bit too. I think I like that better. Click OK and it will update. Now what we want to do is we want to add something for these light sources to actually make them look like light sources because these lights are not quite lit yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. And in this new layer, I'm going to go to a blend mode. We're going to use the color Dodge blend mode. And now what I'm going to do on this new layer is I'm going to grab a brush. Let's go up here under the brush and we're just going to create a soft edge brush. So the hardness is going to be all the way around, soft round. And we're going to set this foreground color. We could go to pure white or just a slight off white. Just give it a little touch of the yellow there. All right. And let's increase this right now. Opacity set at 50. Let's turn it all the way up to 100. So I got my brush size about the size of that lamp. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to paint in there. Notice how now this is illuminated. So like suddenly there's a bulb in there. <laughs> All right, so let's do the same for over here. Start to do that. For these different areas, now we're going to start to add that light. Looks good. Now we could do the same in some of these windows if we want to just start to paint in there a little bit. See what we're doing? And as we're just doing that around those edges, it's just giving it a little bit more like there's an actual light source inside there. All right, why don't we look at doing something else? I'm going to show you a little bit of bokeh in the distance. So we're going to kind of do a variation of here. So what I want to do is I want to go back to my light and uh, back to my layer here. And I'm going to double click on camera raw. And let's open this up. And what we're going to do inside of here is we're going to grab our brush tool. And if we click on this, this will show me where I painted. Now, if I want to get rid of these areas down here, which I'm going to do now, I'm just going to click on erase and I'm just going to paint these out. I just want to get rid of all the ones down there. Great. Now, why don't we go back over here and we're going to grab our oval tool. And this is just kind of like the freedom you have here. Um, we're going to click on this. If I want to get rid of it, just hit the delete key. Let's click on this one. Hit the delete key. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of removing that distant light because I'm going to do this in a different way. I'm going to show you how to create the light bokeh effect. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to add a light, like the bokeh effect. So rather than having these lights like soft and glowing, we want them kind of blown out like it's blurry uh, in the distance. So we're going to create a brand new layer, but I'm going to hold down the alt or the option key as I do it. Because what I want to do with this layer is I want to set it to black. So we're going to change the blend mode of this to a screen blend mode, which means that black will be hidden. So we create a new layer by holding down Alt or Option. This brought up the dialog box. Inside the new layer dialog box, we changed the mode from normal to screen. And then that turns on this box. Click on that and it's going to fill it with black when I click OK. Notice it's filled with black, but you can't see it because screen blending mode hides black. And this is going to enable us to see what we're doing. Now we want to paint on here with a white or a slightly off white. So I'm just clicking the color picker right there. And notice I'm just almost a white, but it's just slightly off. I've got a little bit of yellow in there. And I'm going to make sure opacity and flow are both turned up to 100. And then when these lights are, I'm just going to just tap once to add the light. So rather than have that blurred light source, we're creating it here 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm also going to hit the left bracket key to make these a little smaller. So these would be like street lamps and things in the distance. See how now we're kind of following what would be a street lamp. And of course, on the other side of the street, we're also going to have those street lamps. And maybe we pop one up here into the tower. And let's just put one in there because it'd be a light, maybe in that door. So what we've done is we've just kind of added these as dots. Now I'm going to show you how to turn these into a bokeh. So with this layer selected, we're going to choose filter and then we're going to go down to blur and under blur, we're going to go down and we're going to choose lens blur. So this is why we put the black so you can see what we're doing. So with the blends blur filter open, let's go to specular highlight and turn up the brightness. And we're probably going to have to turn down the threshold. There we go. Notice now that these are lighting up and looking more like a light bokeh. We can even change the shape of these. Right now it's a hexagon. We could change these to different shapes. And what these are doing is simulating the aperture on a camera lens. So these are not quite round anymore. They're kind of taking on the shape they would from an out of focus uh, light spot known as bokeh. So we're going to click OK. And see how that's just kind of making those pop a little bit. Now the other option we could do if we wanted is add a little bit of blur off into this distance. So why don't we do that just for fun? So we're going to click on the layer and we're going to choose filter and then we're going to go to our blur. But under the blur, we're going to choose blur gallery and we're going to drop in a field blur. Okay. So what this field blur does is it enables, enables us to put the, this out of focus in the distance. So I'm going to drag this up here and notice as I do this, see how it gets blurry in the distance. And as it starts to get blurry like that, notice now this bokeh makes sense because this is what you'll see in a blurred photo. When you get that kind of um, shallow depth of field and something goes out of focus, the light will pop like this, like this bokeh. Okay, so I'm going to click to add a second point. And if I hold down the control key, or that would be command, on Mac, control on Windows, double click. And what that will do is it will set this blur to zero. Look up here, see the blur is set to zero. So what we can do now is if we drag this, notice we get this blend between the two different layers. So we've got that there and we've got that one there. So we could increase the amount of blur we wanted or reduce it. See that? That's increased. Reducing it. And so what we're doing is we're putting a little bit more kind of depth of field into our photo. Let's pull this up a little bit more though, because I want it to stay in focus. So between these two points is where that blur is going to happen. So the foreground is nice and sharp, background is getting out of focus. This area here should be sharp though. So what we can do is just click here and then either control double click or just drag that down to zero and we're getting rid of the blur up here. I'm just going to pull this off to the side just a little bit. There we go. Same thing on this side. If we don't want this blurred, let's just control double click. And so we're adding that. So now you'll see how the depth of field is starting to fall off over there. If I want this more gradual, I'll just move it around. So see what we've done is we're creating this kind of blur off into the distance. So we've created a lighting effect. And now we're also creating a little bit of distance, which looks kind of nice for the night scene. So we're just going to click OK. All right, so if we kind of look at this photo here and we go before, this is where we started. Then we add the camera raw adjustments to tame it into nighttime. We add that little bit of a blur there into the distance. Then what we're doing here is just adding those hot spots for the lights and then the bokeh finally in the distance. So those are some different things we kind of looked at. So I know this one is a little bit different than what we've done before, but the whole point of this is to show you different things. And um, I've definitely got more videos you should check out. Check out the last few videos I've been doing on the lighting effects series. And then also there was one I did a day for night where I'm painting it all in Photoshop. I'll add a link to that underneath as well. And if you put all of those kind of techniques together, you can start to do different things. So we focused on something a little bit different this week. Um, and I'm curious, do you guys find this useful? Let me know in the comments underneath if it's something you feel like you can apply to the other things that you've learned so far. And by the way, we've started our beginners tutorials, which we're doing once a week. I just did last week's one on layers for beginners. And if you're a beginner or you want to see beginner tutorials, let me know in the comments underneath what topics you'd like. I've also noticed a few, quite a few people 
that are more experienced have been doing the beginners tutorial and said they learned a lot of uh, fundamental things. So even if you're not a beginner, maybe there's some fundamentals in there that might be new to you. So anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this, consider hitting the subscribe button, become part of the cafe crew, turn on all those notifications so you know when I upload my new video, which is every Tuesday, right now every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, we're doing our live stream live from lockdown, and we'll be doing it this week as well. And then we're also doing that beginner's tutorial. Last week I dropped it on a Saturday, uh, uh, it's going to be somewhere between a Friday and a Sunday. We're trying to figure out the best day. Also, let me know what's the best day for you for that. Anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.